Newcastle have one eye on the championship trophy and one eye on the premiership, but they're not there yet. And against an attacking Bedford Blues side without pressure or expectation, a nine-point buffer is far from certain. But the Falcons know one last big performance and premiership rugby is coming back to the northeast. Mike Rayer has made six changes to the Blues and remains solely focused on this fixture, having not applied for promotion. With Goldington Road not meeting Premiership standards, Bedford will only consider their future off the pitch if they are successful on it tonight. Well, for Newcastle, it is a case of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just one late change in the starting 15. Jimmy Gopeth score of all 18 points at Goldington Road wears the Falcons number 10 jersey for the very last time. He's going to be hard to replace. Warren Fury is out with a shoulder complaint. Roy Lawson comes in at scrum half with his fellow Scotland international Ali Hogg at eight. Up front, Grant Shields, another Scotsman, and Oliver thomas Czech will want to assert their dominance on Bedford again. Behind Carlo Del Fava, man of the match in the first leg, and his no-nonsense physical display rather summed up Newcastle's performance. Well, Mike Rea freshens up his side with six changes. Josh Bassett returns. The winger is a born finisher. That's certainly what was are hoping. That is where he'll be playing his rugby next season. Only Dodge wears the 13 shirt outside Mark Atkinson. We didn't see the best of the talented inside centre in the first leg. Perhaps with Jake Sharp coming in at 10, we may see more of a threat from that area. Dara Vindal is scrum half in an all-new look half-back pairing. Two new starters in the front row too. Scott Sperling replaces Neil Cochran and Dan Seal is preferred to Phil Bolton at the all-important tight head spot. So here we go then. Just 80 minutes of rugby left in the English season and a place in the Premiership at stake. Will it be Newcastle or Newcastle? Bedford have to make some decisions of their own. And it's Jimmy Gopper who gets us underway. There's no pressure on Bedford, is there? Last game of the season. All that pressure is on Newcastle. Didn't lose a game until the second round, the last round of the regular season against Bristol here. But they have started to wobble towards the end of the season. Sort of in that first semi-final, didn't we, against Leeds? But the way that Leeds attacked the game, Bedford will have taken huge heart, and that's the way that they'll want to approach the game this evening. As Vinland out, the box kick down into the 22. Yeah, you don't have to play fast and furious from underneath your post. You know, you can put your your boot on it and take you making a mistake. That isn't far enough. There's not a great deal of wind out there, and he just puts it on his back there to. Scott Sperling turnover, and then it's the fly half, sorry, scrum half. Vinan Dahl is himself a lovely little dribble bounce kick into the corner, so it's going pretty well. One minute on the clock for Bedford so far. They've got a bit of territory anyway. McLeod takes the line out, the man who calls this line out for Newcastle, an athletic man. And this start is all important for Bedford, isn't it? It really is. Tonight, for me, they'll have to give it a lash. And, uh, and hold on for the full 80 minutes. You're starting nine points behind, you know, it's foot to the floor stuff, it has to be. And with the selection of the new half-back pairing, especially this man, Jake Sharp at Tenney. He's a born footballer. Been in doubt, his two pipe. Atkinson. Really is one for the future, Mark Atkinson is in and out. Just getting that ball away. Jake Sharp came in very quickly, he needed to, didn't he? Tackle by Mark Wilson. Well, the tackle was late by the letter of the law. It is a penalty, but I know exactly what you need to put Newcastle in that situation. But Bedford just have to forget about the scoreboard, don't they? Just have to keep trying, keep throwing caution to the wind when it pops out in Newcastle. First to react. Hard day or hard evening at the office. Um, it's, this is the start of the beal of anything in the game. As we see the ref cam there. Fenton Wells takes it quickly. Bedford trying to pick this pace up. Here's Mike Howard. 
ever present this season, Mike Howard. Hugely important player for Bedford Blues. Will Welch has got in there, but illegally. Penalty coming as you Kato know, takes it. There was a Bedford line out. Newcastle not challenging at the line out. They do through Howard. He's shot. Darren Fox had a real tussle with Will Welch, didn't he, last week? You have to say, the Newcastle captain got the better of him. Ransom. It's boots of all just pushing Newcastle back again. Always last week, especially Defalva. Defalva, sorry, he's, uh, he was outstanding. And this is hitting in. You see Fox and the support lines are there. Maybe one more ball out would have been good. They're there waiting. He's early push of the second row. Really down Fox done brilliantly. Right across the line out to win that ball. Of course, it was a free kick, so that's why Bedford. Had to throw him to the line out, Finan Dow and Sharp now. Ollie Dodge. He's got his stag here at the weekend. Back up here in Newcastle, so the guys are going home tomorrow <laughs> to sleep for a day, then come straight back up to Newcastle. For Ollie Dodge's stag do. They must like coach journeys, as I like to say. Beware the tune. On very liquid coach journeys. Something you know nothing about there, of course. Absolutely. It's got Sperling. Too tight. Makes in ropes. The possession just not being looked after by Bedford, but it was an illegal. Pressure is a very funny thing, isn't it? In the mind. As we've already said. Pressure is on Newcastle. No bones about it. Grigger Gnandis with the line out take this time. He's the line-out caller, he's the main man, go to him, he fancied it. And this is what Bradford fancied, they fancy taking on Newcastle in their own game. The real sets of the Bedford players when they came off the field at Governorton Road last Thursday was they're annoyed. They didn't represent themselves properly, what they can do. They started here at Kingston Park, the home of the Newcastle Falcons in better fashion there's Dan Seal brought in on the tight head side for Phil Bolton what it does though after a drive like that everything sort of quiets down here again you've got to get your speed up with the ball carries it allows their Newcastle Falcons to come off the line pretty well but again that's the one way of breaking it it's been plenty of tries Josh Bassett over the last few years for Bedford he's been and down well. good hands Fenton Wells good dummy as well Bassett into Will Welch, probably what Josh Bassett, slightly wider than that, Dean and Dow, sharper Gale, Atkinson. Well, they've got some big centres, Atkinson and Dodge can actually stand up at the ball thing and just get their arms free. Calls for a knock-on for Dean and Dow at the base there. Play continues up, sharp, drop goal. Oh, he struck it really well as Jake Sharp, and he's got it. He had plenty of time, backed his skill. And that is a sweet drop goal from the Bedford Blues fly half. Allowing those big it's forwards there to get their teeth into something. It's a good run from uh, Fenton Wells. Strong man as well. He's got that rangy figure. He's sharp, oh, he's through. Burning, in fact. Apologies to that man, Jake Sharp. Atkinson. Ransom. Bedford finishing this first half very strongly. Coming at Newcastle here, and there's a penalty again. Well, these penalties seem to be ramping up now, both for uh, on the Northampton side. And Scott Sperling doing a a very, very good job standing in at 10 there and making those crucial yards, and it's the presentation of the ball. Beanendale's able to do something with that. Good break from the hooker, right up the guts, and then that presentation almost fights to go back towards the scrum half. Bedford being a far more positive, it was a very good start, very controlled start, they got into positions and then kicked their penalties. Now, what will Newcastle do? Wells 
Heart was in his mouth there for a moment. We might drop that ball. Feeling down again. Best kick of the night, Shortland. Consider. One of eight players sign new contracts at Bedford for next season, and it's an incredible production line, Bedford, whether players are there permanently or on loan, but the likes of Dan Cole, Owen Farrell, both of those with the Lions in Hong Kong have played at Goldington Road in years gone by. And again, it's the two big ball carriers, Paul Tupai doing it first, and Fenton Wells, the eight on this side, is a good shaping of the, of the ball. Again, it's all coming from Sharp. Oh, he's found a gap, Sharp! Lost forward. Just took it on a half step too long because Vinadal was on his shoulder. It's That's opportunities it's like that that Bedford must take. They get another opportunity now, though. Here's Ransom. Met by a black wall. Fenton Wells has to do his best to hold off three, if not four, Newcastle counter-ruckers. Sharp. Now there's, there's space out, out there. Atkinson has seen that. He's against El Favre. Pops the ball up, Newcastle offside, Bedford Blues with a penalty. And really, I've got to say, great break from Sharp, he's not only shaping this game superbly, he can see a gap and go through it. There he's gone, he just didn't quite have the support, he's forced the pass, it's actually a very good tackle. Really seen. It's a topsy-turvy game, suspect Bedford will have come straight back here and score and it all starts all over again. Well, the forecaster got it wrong, didn't he? Because it was 67% uh, chance of precipitation, and we haven't seen a thing, and I hope we don't, because it's been an absolute cracker. I mean, finals are normally edgy, tight affairs. We've had plenty of penalties, certainly, but both sides was just with some ambition as well. Of course, Benwin had to do that tonight to have any chance. He's passing. The tussle on the ground with Hufanga, two pipe. Key man in at first 40. Sharp. Down Fox. Sperling. James Short. Now, if he gets away, he's got real pace. Scored a try in a Premiership final. Can he score one in a Championship final? Ransom. Jumping against Ali Hogg. Ransom. Great experience from Ali Hogg. Just let the man go outside. Then made a textbook tackle. This field bot was on the field for Ricky Reed in the Bedford front row. Sharp again. Now it's Bedford's turn to show some patience. Fox scored by Ryan Shortland, but he's shown real strength there. Darren Fox. Now the Bedford picked up from Cambridge. Shows a replacement for Sasha Harding. Now with another long term injury. But He's back from injury now. Gillanders. He does like to run in the open spaces. Dan Seal. They better do back themselves for the last quarter of the game. Two tight. Players becoming more and more vocal out there. Atkinson with that lovely service again. It's Ransom against Hogg again. Hockey's defending wide out here. Batson has just about got that ball back, but he's tackled by Thomas Sheck and Will Welch, and the Newcastle forwards pile in now. Somehow, the ball is back with two points. Charging that ball, leading his pack. Touch! Another number eight. Hogg secures the ball. That's just one out now. They move infield. Give the halfbacks a better angle. Nick Baldwin is on as well. There's some chasing down the kick there, rank 20. Change it scrum half as well. Getting those fresh legs on. And that's it. And that is it. There is the final whistle. Newcastle are back in the Premiership. They finish the regular season. Miles above everyone else. Yeah, it was their first final, wasn't it, Bedford? And played a huge part in the final, but their fourth successive semi-final.